Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to the 13 Reasons Why After Show. Today we are covering Season 1, Episode 1, Tape 1, Side A. And we have Jay Asher, the best-selling author here himself, to discuss it with us. Tune in. You're tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin! What's up, everyone? Yay! 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 Here we are. You have no idea how difficult it was for me to say. Tape one, side A. I have a feeling that's only going to get more and more confusing as the season goes. Yeah. What's going on, everyone? Um, before we get started, I do want to introduce everybody on the panel. I'm Hannah Pritchard. I tweet from at the Hotshot Dude. I'm Becca Brown. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Becca B Talks TV. Hey guys, I'm Shay Jones. You can find me at Real Shay Jones on Twitter and Instagram. Hey guys, I'm Chanel Herlin. I'm so excited to be here. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Chanel Herlin. And you all, we have Jay Asher here. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Who wrote the novel? <laughs> How crazy is that? Very cool. How you doing, man? Great. This is awesome to be here. You have the numbers on After Buzz. Yeah. I know. I know. So we fun. got it everywhere. Perfect. Okay, first, I have to ask you to tell everybody about your blue nail polish. Yeah, yeah, so we had the red carpet premiere last night at Paramount, and a lot of the cast and crew had our nails done, and the same blue Hannah uses in the show to write the numbers on the cassette tapes. It's perfect. It's my first it. time wearing nail polish, and I actually like it. So I got used to it. Really fast. <laughs> Wait, did you apply it yourself? Or did I you? didn't. I did it. Actually, the editor of 13 Reasons Why, which is perfect, right? Because she was very careful about not getting my skin. Yeah, I'm very, pretty impressed. Are you going to keep a J for a week or so? it wears off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good for you, man. And then people I ask, it. I can say, Netflix show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Look at me. I love that. I think that's great. Okay. So, well, first of all, who all here read the book? Bef I didn't. Did not. I'm, I'm reading long. I didn't. <laughs> You're reading long. You have not. I need to. And you have not? I have not. Okay, great. Then that actually is awesome because I read the book, so I'm going to have a hard time, like, predicting and doing all of those things with you all. So good to know you can. <laughs> and Jay, I'm assuming you read the book, right? I did a couple times. <laughs> okay, good. Cool, yeah. cool. And you've watched the first episode. I've, I've seen the whole season, yes. I've seen the first episode several times. Okay, so talk to us about that. When you first wrote the book back in, what, 2008? It came out in 2007, so it took me a okay. few years of writing it before that, yeah. Okay, did you have any idea while you were writing it that... It was going to be this. Not that it would be a Netflix show. <laughs> no. Did we even have Netflix? They had Netflix. No, they wait, were, we they were mailing out the DVDs into your mailbox. Wow. Oh. 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 I, I, original content. So yeah. I actually Evolved. canceled that like a couple months ago, my DVDs. I still had them for like the longest no, time. No, you're not. I still got them. Like, something comes into me. Like, I loved having DVDs and I like, put them on like, my laptop and I would watch it and I would ship it back and give my stuff back in the day. I love that, but I had to cancel what? it. I, I can't afford it no more. Like, <laughs> I can't I was, believe like, you're still getting them. Reading. Well, That's now these these new laptops are going to come with the DVD thing. Yeah. So. I have to That's shoot, so I have, to, I have to worry about that. I have That's to shoot, will always take a CD. <laughs> all right, so I want to ask how this all started then. I know that you off camera have told us a little bit about how everything yeah. got started, but now let's all tell again. everybody. Yeah, so the book came out 10 years ago, and it's almost eight years ago that Selena Gomez and her mom, Mandy Teefee, approached me about turning it into a movie at the time. Yeah. And we had had several people, several producers already show interest in. I would meet with them, and there was always something that made me feel, you know, the book just meant too much to me. And unless they were completely on board with my vision, um, yeah. I just didn't feel safe giving it over. And so I met with Mandy and Selena, and multiple hour conversation, and they just completely got it, mm -hmm. which was a good place to start. Yeah. And it was so funny, because they said, you know, we want you involved, which everybody was telling me, that's what they all say, that's Hollywood. <laughs> that's they but they were true to their word. They had me come in, help them interview other producers, and... I think it's because of them that the show is something that I'm very proud of. Yeah. yeah. And you got to be on set a lot of the time, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, which was amazing and weird and so cool to see these awesome. things that were just in my head. Now, like, actual sets and, you know, a real coffee shop and movie theater that wasn't there a yeah. couple months before. That's so cool. So weird. Was a lot of it, like, how you envisioned it while writing? Um, a, no, it was no. better than I envisioned. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> in a lot of cases. Um, you know, a lot of places are based on places where I live, so all I did was picture that, you know. And so when I see them create it and get really into the design and um, make it look very cinematic, it's it was really cool to see. Yeah, yeah. the shots are beautiful. It's very are. beautifully done, yeah. It is. Yeah. 
So with the writing, did you ever get to go into the writing room for the series? Yeah, I went in a couple times and I looked at some scripts and it was the same thing when, like when I met with Mandy and Selena. I met with Brian Yorkie, the creator of the show, before he officially signed on. And same thing. He was actually a fan of the book before he got this job, which again is a great place to start. You have somebody yeah. who loves the book being in charge of adapting it. And, and yeah, when I saw the first script, it was really weird because the notes that I gave back, you feel... It's my book. I should say something to keep them on track. <laughs> but the things I had to say were so insignificant. Like yeah. it was nothing really. Yeah. And so I was. I'm very lucky. Yeah, it's really lovely the way they've expanded on some of the yeah. characters right from yeah. the get go. I really, really like it. It's that very was, exciting. For me, the most exciting part was watching it and seeing things that I didn't write. Yeah. Or scenes that I didn't write, or dial the dialogue that I didn't write, and yet have it sound like my characters. Yes. Was so incredibly. Wonderful. It's super cool, and I hope we're not giving away too much for those of you who have not read it. I will try so hard not to go into much detail about <laughs> the book. But they should as we... read it. Read yes, it. Right. you should should read it. Do what Becca's doing. Yeah. Read along, which I think may be an interesting experience. Yeah, so I'm intrigued right. to see what Becca thinks of it. Yeah. Um, before we start talking about the show, which we obviously need to talk about, I have one more question. Um, what exactly inspired originally when you wrote it? I've heard, I've read and heard a couple yeah. of different takes on what inspired you to write the book in the first place. So. Yeah. There were two basic things that came together to become this book. First was a relative of mine who attempted suicide as a wow. junior in high school, which is the same age as Hannah. Yeah. yeah. And I never thought I would write about it. You know, it was yeah. just too personal. And why would I want to write about that? It was just too personal. And um, and then I had always had this idea for an audio tour type of story, where you have two simultaneous narrators, one li person listening to a recorded voice. And, but I wanted to save it for the right story, where it wasn't just used as a gimmick, but yeah. kind of expanded on what I was trying to say. And one day those two ideas came together, and I, like I said, I didn't necessarily want to write about that issue, but it, it was an important issue to me, and I thought that was the best way to do it. I thought it was a very responsible way to do it, because you have her words, but you also have somebody left behind and yeah. his thoughts. Uh, <laughs> it's so empowering. Especially like, uh, never mind. I can't say because I know what happens. You know, <laughs> so I can't say. What What's everybody else's opinions right off the bat who have not read the book? Well, I I mean, well, we've watched one episode and it's going to be really hard not to binge watch the series. <laughs> okay. right. That's what I was thinking last night after watching the first episode. I'm like, I want to put, press play on the second episode, but self-control, come on. Yeah. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, I mean, it'll be cool for us to only have watched, because we're doing two episodes yeah. following Fridays. It'll be cool for us to have just watched those episodes and talk about it. But, I mean, the first episode, I mean, the characters are phenomenal. And also the casting process you were telling us is so interesting that Hannah is actually an Australian. Yeah. And she sent yeah. through a self-tape, which I think is amazing. Yeah, thing. she filmed in her room on her iPhone, sent it in, and That's they, you know, they, they were reading hundreds of actresses, you know, it's yeah. a really cool part for somebody that age, Yeah. and they saw her as this person who lives in Australia, and they just could not stop thinking of her as Hannah, and so Tom McCarthy, who directed the first two episodes, over Skype, over a couple of days, just kind of worked with her, like, how, okay, we think she can do this, but now how does she, you know, take direction, and at the end of it, they're just like, that's her. Oh, that's incredible. Does she live here now? Sorry, Becca. Does that's she okay. live here now? Um, she's filming a movie here now, Ooh. or filming it in Atlanta, I think. Um, but she doesn't, I don't know, I don't know where her permanent uh, yeah, residence is yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was going to say, she's incredible, and I'm looking at her IMDb page, and she doesn't, like, have much right now, yeah. but she's going to oh, yeah. be a star. Well, that's what I love about it, games. because the, she's the main character, and she doesn't have, she only has, like, four, I think, on IMDb. I also yeah, looked, right. and I was she like, has... that's incredible that it's a new face, a new actor, that, yeah. you know, they still help hope out there for actors. Yeah, right? you know, jobs <laughs> yeah. are coming around. <laughs> Which it seems to be the case for a lot of the cast. Like, aside from Dylan and some of the older cast members, a lot of the young students it's their first or second big job it yeah. seems like yeah super it's cool great. it's, it's like, very yeah. exciting for the show it yeah it's exciting and they're all such great people and i have to say with dylan he was my first choice for clay really and but i didn't tell the producers i didn't tell the casting people because i didn't want to influence them but i i saw him in previous things and i just thought man if we could get him as clay that would be perfect <laughs> That's hey, so Jay, maybe awesome. casting directing's coming maybe up your way. Maybe it is From um, Dylan, I was getting a bunch of uh, Logan Learman and Perks of Being a Wallflower mm -hmm. vibes, yeah. which I felt was perfect for the character. Yeah, which yeah. Before, before Dylan, in my mind, Logan would have been perfect. When we first sold the rights oh, eight yeah. years ago as a movie, 
that he was the person I had in mind. Yeah. I feel like I saw people talking about that online like way back when. Yeah, when we first announced it, every every day, every day on Twitter, people were like, Logan should be Clay. Logan, I'm going to be so mad if Logan's not Clay. And then just to mess with them, I followed him on Twitter one time. And instantly, everybody's like, Jay's following Logan. It's got to be him. Social media, man. That's crazy. Social media, word spreads fast on that thing. Speaking of social media, that brings us into the beginning of the show because I thought it was interesting when they introduced at the beginning with the locker and Hannah's yes. death that immediately they brought the social media aspect into it, which I thought played through a lot of this first episode, and I hope continues to, is showing the big generation gap in the way that social media and new technology is kind of changing the way of things, and then juxtaposing her using these tapes that kind of are lasting forever. Yeah. Um, But I thought, I was so disgusted and appalled within the first five minutes that... selfie? Yes! Yes. Hashtag never forget. Oh my god! Which is a shame, but it's kind of exactly... Yeah, it's how our generation is. And that's how you mourn, that's how you share that you're sad is on social media, apparently. And that was in our face, first episode, first few seconds. It's more so the idea of being sad versus actually experiencing the emotion and the trauma that's happening, which... It's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely and, crazy. And actually, Hannah says that one thing where she says, yeah. you know, she, I'm using G, I'm using the map instead of GPS and giving you the text because the interweb take makes everything worse. Yeah. The interweb makes everything worse. And I was like, yeah. you know what? That's that's kind of true. It's right. happening. Really yeah, true. I like that it's, I like that there's a bunch of old school aspects yeah. to yeah. the show. And we can still kind of relate yeah. to that. Yeah, well, actually, I don't know how old you guys are. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I can still kind of relate to that. I can relate to that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah because I, I used to make fun of my like my dad because he had eight tracks. Okay. Like I mean, Jeez. like I'm talking about eight tracks. Like he legit like had like I'm talking about he has a pristine mint condition. Like he he kept it in such good condition where like it still plays. And I was just like, you do know there's like CDs now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like I'm just saying. But also, Jay, when you were I writing like, this book. Uh, Oh, what? Ah, <laughs> um, uh, when you were writing this book, I mean, that was like then over 10 years ago, social media wasn't what it is now. No, not and at it, all. You're so, yeah. it's so accurate because it really is disturbing and it's messing up kids in high school. I mean, I'm so glad I'm not in high school anymore. No, it's scary. It was, for me, it was worse than, at least for me, it was worse than middle school. Yeah. Like, high school, was, like, it was different for me, but middle school was where, like, I felt like Hannah feels now. Like, I, like, like, in, like watching the show, it's just like, yeah, it resonated with it me. It resonated so. with me because I'm just like, if I, if I was smart enough to like, have like, not smart enough to like have killed myself, but like I've thought about it and I had a pros and cons list, like that's how bad it was. Because yeah. bullying sucks. Just Any kind of bullying, yeah. And it was just like, but I, I didn't want to leave my parents behind because I felt like I felt bad like if I did it, like these are the only two people who actually I think really care enough about me and I don't want them to like be, you know, distraught about it because I'm not here anymore. And, like, I think that's interesting when some people do it. They forget the people they leave behind. Yeah. Right. Because, like, you're gone. Like, right. You don't have to, you don't have to feel it anymore. So, like, now the people you left behind have to actually which, face facts. Right, which is the interesting Especially, thing yes. about this whole book, which intrigued me when I first read it, and I'm interested to see the way that the um, show carries that along. But I always thought that was an interesting through line about it because you don't necessarily think about the people you leave behind and yet Hannah was leaving all the tapes for the people that she left behind but yet still were had something to do with her wanting to leave in the first place which I thought was an interesting concept that my brain is still wrapping around completely when I read the book and watching it now and we still got to find out (laughs) yeah it's true well like you mentioned with the leaving the parents behind in in the TV show you see a lot more of the parents and Kate Walsh Yes. playing Hannah's oh ball. Oh my gosh. She's just, the second you see her, you see that she is just devastated. Oh like, my gosh. She's flipped. Yeah. She comes to locker. The, yeah, the whole locker scene Yeah. broke my heart and into a million pieces. Like, the just the line, she doesn't have, like, stickers or anything in yeah. her locker. I was like, that is, like, really sad. Like, yeah. I guess when you see your daughter's son's locker, you want it to be colorful and, like, Letters what memories and photos. to be in there. Right. Yeah. Which also goes with that idea which uh, the teacher was talking about at the beginning of the show, like looking for signs and stuff like that. And I think, I mean, I don't know they haven't said yet on the show if her parents believe that she committed suicide or if they believe it's to be something else. But watching the mom trying to, um, is the word grapple? Gri- yeah. What, yeah, yeah, with the, yeah, with this idea that her daughter may have killed herself. And why doesn't she have, like, this life in her locker? Are these things that I didn't notice? Are these things I didn't see? 
Um, I thought that was interesting, and they showed that right off the bat, the parents trying to understand. But then also they brought up the idea of a lawsuit. Now, what did you all think the lawsuit's about? Well, we all, we kind of know it's about Justin and even Zach a little bit, too. Like, so, and that's like, I'm just, I'm like, what could you possibly have sued them for besides maybe Hannah's emotional distraughtness leading up into her suicide, possibly? Mm -hmm. Right. That's Maybe defamation of character, sending that photo of misconception. Oh, yeah. Because, maybe they read, a, like, her diary. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Because, I mean, when I saw that scene happening, I was like, oh, this is going to go bad. He's taking a photo. Like, immediately I thought yep. he's going to snap a photograph of her underwear. And sure. Like, that literally passed my mind. And then the next day at school, the photo gets shared, and she has no way of covering it up that, you know, it was just a make They just kissed. Because mm. what the photo says is, is a whole lot more. So, I mean, social media is just so devastating. And I almost wish that people in school now, which I know from when we were in school, you thought that school was the world. That was the end or be all. Yeah. But once you leave, there's just so much more. Life is so much mm -hmm. bigger. But when you're in that moment, it's so hard to teach kids that, you know, life is so much more and, and social media just makes it worse. Because that is their world. Yeah, yeah. that is their world at the time. That's all they've experienced. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And once it's shared via technology, it spreads like wildfire. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the cell phones were going off like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the only thing that pissed me off a little bit was about Clay when he, like, he could have just asked her instead of just being like, it's okay to wait. But I'm like, dude, you didn't yes. ask her if it was like... If it was true. Didn't, yeah, you didn't ask. You just immediately assumed it. And like, you, in my mind, you, you fell in love with her. You have a crush on her. So you should at least give her the benefit of the doubt by asking the question. Yeah. Right. That and was that the only line, thing that got me about Clay. I loved it, like, part of me, like, you really hurt my feelings. That line like, cut me deep. That's, like, that line know. is one of my favorite lines in the whole season. Yeah. And again, and I love the fact that I didn't write that. Yeah. You know, that I can watch it and still be impressed by the things that the writers of the series right. did. Yeah. I love that. So that that line was incredible. Did emotional. they did they do variations of that line, like the delivery, or was that kind of... I don't of, know. I wasn't there for that okay. day. I know... The way Tom McCarthy directs, I mean, he does he'll do like 20 takes yeah. and then go back and pick the best one, yeah, that's awesome. which I can't imagine how, how how actors do that, you know, to like stay fresh for 20 takes yeah. in a row. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Especially because Tom McCarthy, he's like, uh, he is the spotlight director and they're yeah. Oscar winning best picture, so at that yeah. point, like... You do, do you, what he says. Yeah. <laughs> but, Absolutely. Yes, and just like his vision, like especially like just cause especially this is the opening episode, that vision, like you're getting pulled into this world. Obviously you created, but he's also creating yeah. this yeah. world that you made. Yeah. And it's so awesome to hear that you know you were really happy and satisfied with what came out. Well yeah, I mean Spotlight was my favorite movie that year. So when I found out he was, before he signed on, I found out he was at least interested in it. That was just incredible. To know somebody of that caliber was interested in my show. And, and he's incredible. When he when he signed on, he invited his niece and her friends over because he wanted to get the teenage female mm. impression of the book. Wow. Like he understood what he loved about it, but what did they get out mm. of it? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I just want to bring up, speaking of social media, <laughs> that <laughs> earlier when we were outside there... Uh, 13 Reasons Why is actually trending. Yeah! Yay. Nice. Yay. Cool. So. And it's not even That's new yet over here. Yeah. Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, in other parts of the country, it's <laughs> later in the day. But here, it's not even new. So That's it's huge. Incredible. That's a huge thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love Congrats. this person. Uh, Rengi, I hope I, I say this right. Say Sorry, guys. Rengi90998 says, a picture says a thousand words, but the truth sometimes. Yeah. I yeah. Love and like that. she says, there are 13 sides to a story. So people see the first thing, they just think it's the truth, whatever they're first thinking. And I love how she said 13 sides because, like, there's her side and then their side. So, like, yeah. the fact that she's showing both sides is, like, a mature thing, too, at the same time. Like, even, like, I, I felt really bad. Like, you're, you're really mature for your age. Just, mm -hmm. like, leading up until when you, you, uh, you know, you die. Like, that's, you must have been thinking a lot. Yeah, so many questions. <laughs> and, the, and it really did all begin with social media. Yeah. I, yeah. And in the book, uh, yeah, there was no social media. Yeah, there was wasn't. Just rumors spread how they normally spread, right. word of mouth. Which, like you were saying, it's so different now. Where it is different, but it's also the same. Like you know, rumors could spread are going to spread one way or another. Right. This is just a new way. But also, like you said, with the photo, it looks like one thing. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, well, maybe that person's lying to me. It's like, but I'm seeing the photo. Mm, right. I'm like, sorry. I, no. I guess in <laughs> social media in general, like, you look at people's Instagram or Facebook and stuff, and it's a highlight reel. It's a highlight reel. They yeah, could yeah. literally be having the worst day, worst life ever, but you look and you're like, wow, this girl, I want to be like her. So or, glamorous. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that photo, just, it's misconception. Yeah. yeah. 
Very true. true. Okay, I wanted to go back a little bit to yes. the plot line of the first episode because we brought up Clay and Hannah sitting at the table. Um, what is everybody's take thus far on Hannah and Clay's relationship and his involvement? I kind of hope, now I don't know anything, I kind of hope that we see a romantic relationship between them later on in the series because okay. obviously he has a crush on her. She's kind of like the cooler girl compared to him. So I would like to see something romantic happen with them, but I don't know if that ever evolves and maybe they just stay friends. Okay. I but I like it. I like their relationship. I might not read the letter something, so I know like his involvement, like he like what his don't involvement is. Don't give any spoilers is, before. Give, but I know what his involvement is, at least in the tape fly, so like I'm actually happy that he's the one is his story being told because of who his character is. Right. And I I just uh, I'm just I want her to fall. I'm like this is a good guy. Like why can't girls just fall for the good mm. guy? Why? What is wrong with us? <laughs> High school are we, drama. Are we hot? Like I said, I think are we hardwired or something? Like to so just like go for the bad boy, and we miss like this socially awkward, cute, nerdy, just adorable <laughs> guy. Like for real. Listen, Disney was a little demented. They they messed us up long ago. <laughs> yeah. And the sad thing about um, the nerdy guys in that perspective than like misfits and the sweet guys is that watching everyone around them makes them into someone they're not. So yeah. like watching the cool guys like Justin right. et cetera, et cetera, who that smile. What's yeah. so funny for me listening to you guys talk is, so I modeled Clay after me in high school, but you guys are acting just like the girls in high school. <laughs> You're like, but why didn't we fall for the nerdy, <laughs> awkward guy? Like, exactly. I, never, I, don't think I, I, think I, I don't think I ever dated what was considered like a bad boy. I'm, I, I'm seriously, I think I'm just really, I'm drawn to awkward quirky guys because I'm a quirky person so like Same. I mean I can think of if you're a bad or you're just hot I can say you're hot but like that doesn't instantly make me like want to like oh I want to date you now like so so Jay is Clay loosely based on you I'm just kind of his personality I okay. like more. and like what you were talking about why didn't he say something yeah why did he believe that right. that's kind of how I was you know I was too too shy to ask the question yeah. here's what I saw is this true oh okay. So nobody thinks that Clay did a bad thing, correct? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. bad as much as I feel like, especially now that, especially like he was like going to like what the hell, like I like I feel like he feels like he could have done more, like that could have helped her. Yeah, okay, maybe. And in that, in that moment, I feel like he really wished he could have helped her. Right. Or why he he couldn't even see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't think he's on the tapes for a bad reason. No, nope. I feel like he made a mistake in the cafeteria scene. Uh, just because he wanted, he was trying to aspire to be like the cool guy. Okay. Guys. Do you think it's gonna go back to that moment on the tapes? That oh. that's the reason he's on it. I mean, that was a pretty em emotional. Yeah. Uh, like wow, I don't know what to think. Scene for me. Okay. So maybe. What do you think? I think maybe it might come back now that you're saying that because okay. she, I feel like she came to him to kind of escape what everybody was saying and felt like she could confide in him and get some reassurance that everything's going to be okay and then he wasn't there for her. Yeah. So uh, maybe that's going to come back. Okay. Yeah. And what about Tony? Oh, Tony creeps me out. <laughs> Tony creeps you out? He does. Okay. The only reason because he like arrives there in his car and then Jay, uh, Clay's listening to the ear, to the tape and Tony's just like there and he's like, Tony. <laughs> okay, one thing I have to say about Tony's car though because reading the book, I was like, he is in just a clunker. Like it's got to be this really just broken down car because he's constantly like working on his car. And then on the show, I'm like, ah, oh, that car costs a lot to get one of those cars. <laughs> to get that car, I'm in love nice with his car. car. Like alone, like I, I'm a Mustang fan, so I'm just in love with it. If I felt like, like it is a Mustang, and like you want to work on it, you want to make sure it's always in mint condition. It's like I think people who work on cars, especially if you're a guy, like it's your baby. You yeah. treat this car like your baby. You have to keep putting work into it to make sure it still runs. And I think it's also he likes working with his dad, even though his dad's a little tough as nails. And just like, dude, if you do this, I will kill you. I was like, <laughs> yes, I, I like the irony line. <laughs> yeah. 
I that think Tony kind of was on my mind and seemed a bit fishy already from the beginning because I know the story is about tapes and he had a tape player in his car right. and they're listening to tapes. So that kind of was like foreshadowing what was going to happen. Right. You know, he grabs his little boombox or walker to listen yeah. to the tapes. <laughs> Not the boombox. <laughs> so I think just from the beginning, I was like, hmm, maybe this guy's got something. You know, it's a little bit more of a story behind Tony. Speaking of, of you, like, being all, like, sketched out by Tony, that's... Uh, the scene where in, um, when Clay had just stolen the Walkman gave me terrible anxiety when he was like, I think you have something yeah. of mine. And he's like, <laughs> what? Your keys. Your keys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. He's gonna like... <laughs> okay, so Tony at this point has told us that he is not on the tapes. He yes. said that to Clay at the end. Why do you think he has the tapes? Well, also because she said in the beginning, rule one, listen, rule two, pass it on, and if you don't, someone's going to reveal it publicly and you are being watched. Mm -hmm. right. So now I'm like, well, maybe Tony's the guy that's watching them, but I feel like also maybe Ooh. that's a bit too obvious already in the beginning of the season. Okay. So that's why I feel like he's not involved in the tapes, because he's the one watching. Okay. And so he maybe, just, what, just stole the tapes? No, I feel like <laughs> she, he, she maybe confi confided in Tony okay. the whole story and where the okay. tapes are going, you know, about the map. So I feel like Tony knows it all. He's kind of like there to represent Hannah when she's not there. Okay. So that's what I feel. Okay. And you think maybe that then he maybe would have had a relationship with Hannah that we haven't learned about yet? Yes. Yeah, okay. That we're going to learn about later on. Cool. <laughs> I'm interested to see, like... <laughs> I almost like this asking you so questions. Fun to you. Awesome when you know, yeah. Yeah, this must be so fun. It is. <laughs> I know everything that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I know certain things only because like I did research for people. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> naughty, you're naughty, but stay. stay I surprised. had to. Like I had to. Like just, I don't know everything about everything. But like, certain, especially like Tony, that's the only reason why I haven't said. I really like their friendship. I feel like they had like secret friendship. Her and him and Hannah. Yeah. So that's why he and like I believe, you know, he is the person that you know is overseeing things while Hannah's not there. Yeah. Cause I love how like she was like, um, how will I know, or will I? Yeah. Like that was just Drum. awesome. Just like I love that just in one line. Speaking of the Hannah like narration thing. I love the shots of her with the mic, like, from behind. Yeah. And then, like, when it just shows the mic and kind of her in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also like how you j you see the hair is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the... I'm super curious about that. Right. About the hair cut. Well, the different. teacher yeah. did say at the beginning, yes. like, you know, look for big changes, like change in haircut. And I like that they gave that little like a imagination or a dream kind of thing of Clay actually going back and wishing he would have said, Hey, I like your haircut. Yeah. And I'm hoping that we get to see more Wait, I of that was those like a moments. Flashback, like he did say it. I don't think it was. I think it was a dream. Like not a dream, but like kind of like a daydream, him wishing he would have done that. That was my impression. Oh. That was my impression at first and then I watched it a second time. And, and it made you think that it wasn't that? I have to <laughs> James like, oh, I want to tell him so <laughs> I don't know what do you tell me what Oh when I watched that I thought it was really happened. You thought it really happened? Yeah, me too. Like, oh. every time you pass, like, you know, the movie theater, he was going back to a time when they yeah. were together. So that's why I thought it was just a flash. But scene. it didn't work for you? I thought that was, like, a standalone of him, like, wishing he would have done that. But but speaking of know. the flashbacks, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like the way that it's been put together where she's narrating and then he's listening, but then we actually see what happens. So the flashbacks are, like, intertwined with what's happening in the present. So I really like how that's come together. Yeah. yeah. Really and there's not, like, a really, like, Big transition editing wise that, yeah. like, that's distracting. Yeah. yeah, it just when flows. it takes you from story to story. Yeah, it does flow. I was because I read before watching this episode. I read the first chapter, and I was wondering how is this going to play off on screen. And it played off it really well. Really tricky, but the way that they pulled it off. I think. No, they really, they really pulled did. it off really well. Okay, if you guys don't mind, I want to go ahead and get into predictions because I want to yes. ask Jay some things yes. before we okay. have to end. Cool. So let's do some predictions. Beta. Yeah. And now, you're after Buzz TV. <sighs> Go ahead. I feel you itching well, down there. <laughs> <laughs> My prediction is kind of what I've said already. I feel like Tony is the, the one there to represent Hannah while she's not. And then also, not necessarily a prediction, but a hope that we see a romantic relationship between Clay and Hannah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, me. Uh, okay, so something about Mr. Porter when he was trying to open that locker, like, just hit me. Mm. Like, I know he's involved, like I said, because I did some stuff, but 
I'm just like I I want I want to see how he's gonna play it out because you know he's a he's he's our teacher and a counselor at that point so I'm just like you should like see the signs like but now you're really emotional so why are you emotional like what did you do in my mind that okay. you feel some type of way okay. about even just opening her locker okay. and then what was with the missing master key like something is involved in predict like what's gonna happen I know you said yeah. that when we watched it and I was like I don't think that matters I think it, like, I, <laughs> I, feel like it, I feel like it wouldn't should have been I don't I feel like for some reason the show is like if it's not if it wasn't said it doesn't mean anything so the fact that it was said it has some type of meaning okay all right I dig it you yeah. um prediction wise um uh, my biggest prediction is with Hannah's mom I feel like uh, both well her parents in general I don't know I feel like she wasn't as close to Hannah as Hmm? As like she wanted to be, so you think there's okay. gonna be like a development a of their story. yeah okay, okay so we'll see more of their yeah. relationship then, cool. I don't and really, you can't make I can't really, really make predictions <laughs> but I do I have a hope that we learn what the lawsuit is because that was that was not in the book safe yeah. to say so okay. I would, I'm intrigued about that. Do you think anything else is gonna be different from the book? Well, <laughs> it already seems like a lot. I think we're gonna learn a lot about um, characters that we didn't really get to learn their relationships with each other, like the fellow students in the book. So I'm excited to see how they all react with each other and interact with each other and the way that they react to finding out one by one who's on the tapes. Mm, mm. So I'm excited for that. You, you've you seen all of them, haven't yes, you? Yeah. <laughs> you can't predict with us in the slightest. Okay, but more so I want to talk to you about things that are coming up for you. Um, because I know this was your first book. You had another one come out... You had one Last in two October. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that one because I don't know much about that one. Yeah, What Light is basically a love story set okay. on a Christmas tree farm. Aww. Yeah, yeah that's the, <laughs> that's the reaction audience. I wanted. Yeah. So I don't need to watch the ABC Family Christmas movies? I can read your book next year? <laughs> yeah, you should, you should watch those. Those are, those are good. Those are cool. Those make you feel nice. And the cover of the book is... Gorgeous, I, I love, love it. I love the cover, yeah. With the yeah. little line. And then I have a graphic novel that we just announced yesterday that's coming out later this Ooh. year. I am so stoked about that. Yeah, it's, it's not... I, the illustrations are incredible. So were you a big graphic novel fan? Not necessarily. I mean, I dabbled in them, but I just never got that into them. But I wrote um, a, a screenplay about... It's basically it's a, it's a expanded telling of the Pied Piper with a friend, Jessica Freeberg, and... Then we decided instead of the screenplay, let's do it as a graphic novel since we're published. Let's see, let's do it this yeah. way. And, and the artist Jeff Stokely is incredible. It's very eerie, very creepy, and cool. like a dark romance. Do you want to branch over into doing some screenwriting? Yeah, I do. This has like opened up a whole world, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's. I my my friend Trey Pearson. I he has a music video that's actually probably dropping in just a few minutes. Oh, Ooh. and I I helped produce that. And so I'm kind of dabbling in, in different types of medium now. Awesome. This is like a really big 24 hours this for you. This is an incredible 24 hours. <laughs> the yeah. new nails, the trending, like yeah. everything is happening. Premier, <laughs> announced a new book yesterday. Yeah. Your friends, like you produced a music video that's coming yeah. out. Yeah. Dude, speaking congratulations. Of, speaking of branching, we have a question in the live chat. Yeah. Uh, Cameron, let me see, because... Cameron Varner, Jay, would you compare a TV format versus a book format? I mean, how would you compare it, and what format is better? That's that's cool. I, you know, I wrote the book. I wrote it exactly how I wanted it to be. So my telling of that story is exactly how I think it should be in a novel form. And that's what's so mm -hmm. cool about having 13 episodes is that you can kind of expand on some of the characters. And I really think the TV show is exactly how it needs to be for that medium. So I'm so happy with both. Like, I feel they're my characters, they're my reasons, it's my story. And yet, I feel the people that did the TV show, it's just as much theirs. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to say it's just as much theirs. And I think, you know, if some people, I think you should watch both, you should watch and read both and compare. Mm -hmm. But some people are going to love the show. And if somebody says, I kind of like the show a little more, that's fine. <laughs> if you say you love the book more then that's really cool but I would totally fine with people loving the TV show yeah. not possible people have been recommending your book to me for years yeah. yes. years yeah. and I finally got it in right before the, the show came out <laughs> that's exciting yes based on that um, obviously I don't know how the first season or the season ends right now but would um, you be opposed to like 
a second season? I wouldn't be opposed to it for many reasons. One, I think the way the season ends, it's, it's very complete how it ends. But yeah. you could go on from go there. On. I was going to say, I've heard a little rumor yeah. that they've already decided there's going to be a season oh. two. Oh, I can't. Oh, you, can't, you can't confirm or deny <laughs> that, can you? That's enough big drops for me for the last time. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Can okay. Can yeah, a break? <laughs> but one reason I would love it as well is just the people involved. I would love to be able to hang out with them even more because yeah. they're incredible people. That's really mm-hmm. exciting. In that case, I'm going to say, like we were talking about there, I'm going to say, I think if there's second season, like we should see another character and get their tapes and like see their side of those in 13 episodes of how it transpired between them and Hannah mm-hmm. through 13 episodes. Okay. All right. I also want to get on the record what you said about Justin. Oh, the smile? smile, He's super hot in in tats. I'm a sucker for tats. I can't help it. (laughs) Tell him about your family real quick. (laughs) Yeah, in in the there's a basketball scene in the first episode where I have some some my sisters in law and a bunch of my really close friends are there in the scene right in front of the two rows in front of Clay and Hannah. Some of them got cropped out. But you can still see foreheads. <laughs> like that, Random but, finger, yeah. yeah. Well, um. And my editor and my wife have extras later in the show, and so oh, that's really awesome. I never got my act together and myself. <laughs> so, so that's another reason the season two would be awesome. I could finally get a get cameo. My cameo. Yes. 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 Yeah. Which is that's why needed. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is season why. two. Definitely. Cool. Well, that is about. Um, oh wait, you have a real th- a thing, real quick. <laughs> well, and. I'm going to get to this, but also I find it interesting because I'm on the About Jay Asher uh, web, part of the website, on the 13 Reasons Why website, and I find, find it interesting that you've worked at a lot of bookstores. I've worked at a lot of bookstores. While I was writing the book, actually, my first bookstore Research. job was while I was writing, which is a, such a cool place to work, and libraries, when you're writing. Did you yeah. draw inspiration from any authors in particular? Uh, well, the first what we would call a YA author that I read, his name was Chris Crutcher, and that was my introduction to teen literature and just the honesty and the... I never read anything that was considered teen literature when I was a teen. There, there was some out there, but it wasn't a lot, and so I just wasn't aware what you could do and how honest and raw you could be, and so when I came up with my idea, it was like that was my model of you just go there, you write it how it needs to be written, you don't hold back. Him. Well, we're all very yeah. thankful. Yeah, <laughs> very, very. seriously, it's such Important. a wonderful topic that does not get discussed enough in this detail. So thank you for writing this book and for thank giving you. them the opportunity to make a show based off of it. Thank you. Thank very you exciting. This was People fun. are afraid to rent, to talk about that topic, I feel like. Yeah, so this is a perfect yeah. medium to get the conversation going, which and is lovely. so cool to hear some of your predictions. I will just yeah. say, some of you are right, some of you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at predictions. Okay, so. before we head out, you guys, Becca has something to tell you guys about a cool thing we're doing for you. Um, you can go on iTunes. If if you've watched other After Buzz shows, you know that you can go on iTunes and like rate and comment. comment. Repeat. We love it. Um, yeah, we love it. <laughs> Five stars or four stars. <laughs> we like to say that anything less yeah, does doesn't not work. work. Like y'all says. Shout out to yes. y'all. But um, if you rate, I have this book that I just brought today, and we're going to get... Everyone who gets on our after show to sign it. Yeah. Starting with Jay. Jay. He's already who signed. Already signed it. Yay. So we're gonna fill it up for you guys. If you guys comment on our iTunes, we'll see the comments. We'll put you in a raffle and at the end of this we'll season. Give away. Yeah, we'll give it away. That's really cool. So awesome. Such a cool prize. Spread right. the word. <laughs> Before we head out, um, just, let's just get some last minute. Like, where can everybody find you? Cool, guys. Uh, well, I'm Chanel Herlin, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Chanel Herlin. So let me know what you think of the series so far. Yeah. Hey, guys. I'm Shay Jones. You can find me at Real Shay Jones, and let me know. I'm really interested in the theories you guys have. I love yeah. reading comments <laughs> on our YouTube page, just mm-hmm. like the comments, because your theories give me life. So, <laughs> <laughs> please do not be afraid to leave one. And I'm always on social media. You can find me at Becca B. Talks TV on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Jay. Send your predictions. Jay, where can everybody find you? I'm on Twitter, Jay Asher Guy, and Hi. on Instagram, Jay Asher 13. Dig it. Hey. And I'm Hannah Pritchard. You all can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Hot Shot Dude. And we will see you next week. Yay. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Do we do buzz? From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, yeah. Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. 
I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.